Hello everyone, this is Amit Dan of AmitDan.com. You're watching one of my Australia travel videos on the Sovereign Hill playlist and today I'm taking you back in time 200 years ago. Sovereign Hill in Ballarat, a small city from the 1850 gold rush in Australia, is preserved as it was back in those days. You'll be able to go back in time and experience the gold mine city. Experience time and life in this recreated gold township of the 1850s with me. In this episode, I'll take you deep underground in the gold mine. I'll take the mine tram or train to go deep underneath Sovereign Hill. Video recording was not permitted while the tram was in so I couldn't record anything while I was on tram going underground. Experience how miners worked 200 years ago to dig out the rich gold bearing layers of quartz, rock and the technology used in areas of original workings. There will be more videos coming up from, from the Sovereign Hill Gold Mine City. Sovereign Hill Gold Mine City located in the suburb of Ballarat, an hour drive from Melbourne. Thank you for watching this video. Forget about subscribing this channel, forget about liking this video, I'll see you shortly. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll answer them along the way. Head to say, folks. <laughs> Down or there is an 
hands to put their hands together the one this left. So take around about one to one and a half hours for a young miner to climb a thousand feet. If they're an older miner and they've got a few health issues, they'll probably take around about two to three hours. All right, Grace, can I get you all to turn around for me, please? Who's coming through in this section here? is very very pacific okay and you can see that right now by looking at it these men aren't just coming into the mine and finding gold they're actually looking for indicators to indicate that quartz to have that gold in it it's a carbonaceous slate which is what's in front of you that black stuff running down the rock it's natural and it will indicate your quartz which will indicate your gold Quartz is solid, it can support a mine. I will talk about that a bit later on. Folks, I'm not stopping at the next three displays. Please have a look on the left-hand side as we walk down this drive. Uh, and I'll have a discussion with you about the techniques they use to get through this quartz. Head this way, folks. The sun's 45 degrees diagonal to the earth. So the mines are built to follow the small and very This is where they come and see the Come down here, let's get this bag. Don't want you too far back. It's going to be over here. Keep coming along, folks. Keep moving right in. Move right in up to here. Come down to me, folks. Yep, come down to me. In front of me. Yep, come down. That's it. One person's going to do it. That's it. All right, folks. So, um, I didn't stop at the last lot of displays, but uh, I just want to have a talk to you about um, what a pillar is and the techniques they use to get through this quartz. Um, does anyone know what a pillar is or can anyone tell me what a pillar is or what it does? Pillar supports the roof, helps support a roof structure. It sure does. So, let's just say this post here to the right of me, uh, is that's a pillar. So, if I take that out, what's going to happen to this one? It's going to fall. So... Uh, some quartz uh, in independent mining and also company mining may be left behind due to it being a supporting structure, so being left as a pillar. Okay. So if you take out the gold and take out that quartz, what's going to happen? It's going to lose the base. What's going to collapse? <laughs> that's correct. Your mine's going to collapse. So it's a safety thing. So that's how strong this quartz is. Okay. It can support a mine. So you can imagine the techniques these miners go to and the lengths they go to to get this gold out. 
So one of the techniques is uh, the hammer and gad. We just walked past it. It would have been on the left-hand side. You all should have seen a nail and a hammer, yes? Yep. yep. It's called the hammer and gad. One miner turning the nail a quarter of an inch every time the other miner hammers the end of it. The trust exercise, I say. Okay, but that takes days, weeks, possibly even months. Okay, they've got to make seven holes for that black powder and they've got to be quite deep for that explosive to go off. And seven of them. Right. Now that was back in the 1800s. About the 1860s, 1870s, around that time, they uh, made something called the widow maker. Okay. In other plate and terms, a drill. All right. I'll, I'll explain why it gets its name in a moment. It runs off compressed air from the surface, and it's only one miner this time, two hands on it at all times. Okay? It's quite loud. What do you think happens to them? They go deaf. They go deaf. They, they can't put their fingers in their ears. They can't put earmuffs on that they don't have them. They don't put cotton wool. They don't have any of that. Okay? Two hands on it at all times, these men go deaf. That does not kill them. What does kill them is when that drill goes into the rock, it causes a fine dust. That dust is toxic to these miners. They don't know that. Okay? Gets into their lungs. May have heard uh, of miner's cough or silicosis. Basically, lots of health issues, and these miners have a life expectancy of 30 to 35. Very, very short. Uh, they couldn't work out why these men were dying. They obviously worked out it was from the dust problem, but didn't realise it was toxic. Uh, so they added water. It got rid of your dusty situation, but you're in a very small environment. You've got water that is sitting there. It is not draining away. It becomes stale. Causes pneumonia. Still a very short life expectancy. Okay. So the risk these men go, the lengths they go to, to find gold, to make sure their families will always have food and water. Uh, Being in a company mine, they will always have a wage. So they can provide food and water for their families and their families won't starve. Uh, Folks, in a moment, we're going to go past the drill that will just be here on the left and we're gonna go through some doors and we are going to leave the company behind. We are all gonna become independent miners. Who wants to be an independent miner? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds yeah. dangerous. <laughs> you won't all be saying that in a moment. Head this way, folks. Two people that I have to get in here. I know you're all fit, I do it every day. Get yeah, moving, down here, down here. I'm right, that's it, so you can see. That's it, down here, mum. That's it. Fantastic. Move in, sir, so you can see. Move in the gap if you like. All right, folks. Welcome to our independent. Oh, that's very bright. <laughs> welcome to our independent mine. Uh, very different, isn't it? Okay. Now, while we're in here, I need you to imagine. It's really hard to do. Okay. It takes some skill. And I reckon you've all got it. Imagine two rock walls there, either side of you. Two rock walls. These don't exist. Sovereign Hill blasted through them and created this, this track area. Okay? So they created these two rock, the, this hole here that you've just entered and it will be your exit area in a moment. Okay? They did not exist when this mine was being created. This mine is a real independent mine, okay, that was discovered by Sovereign Hill 40 years ago. We've had people tell us a bit about it because independent miners don't keep records. Company mines, yes. Independent mines, no. They didn't have to. There are thousands and thousands of mines that we still don't know about today. Now, what we know about this mine is uh, they were down here for about two to three years. A couple of brothers maybe, father and son. We're hoping they kept it within the family. And we think that they're from Cornwall in the UK because this is a Cornish technique. It is called a stope and pillar mine. I'll just talk about the stope in a moment. What's a pillar? It's 
Support. 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 Right. So at the very back of this mine, you can't actually see it. Uh, it goes around a corner. I can't even see it standing here. Uh, is a large piece of quartz being used as a pillar. There is still three thousand dollars worth of gold in there right this second. <laughs> Who would like to go get it? Put your hand up if you'd like to go get that that uh, gold out. No. I All right. Care. So uh, the three people that put your hands up, I'm getting out of here first. <laughs> go for it. But uh, say bye to your families because you probably wouldn't survive. You're taking out the gold, which is coming out of that pillar of quartz. You're taking the pillar away. Bye bye. <laughs> Your mind will collapse. Okay? And I will tell you this that pillar has been supporting this mind for over 150 years. We're talking about the 1870s, folks. Who's this? Great job. Yeah. Um, now who wants to go get the gold? Do you check it once in a while? It is safe, I'm sure. Can I take a, a little piece up? No. <laughs> Trust me, sir. If I could, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, we have modern day technology of our shock creek and our rock balls, so spray on concrete concrete and our rock bolts that go through our mine. Okay. That's modern day technology that they use today. Not mm. back 150 years ago. Today. They didn't have any of that. All they relied on was that pillar of quartz. Who wants to go get the gold now? Mm -mm. Didn't think so. <laughs> I still want to take a shot at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by all means. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the stoke part of the mind. So stoke in the Cornish language means steps. S-T-O-P-E. Okay. Here are your steps. Okay, folks. They've made steps to get to the mining above them, okay? You can also see that in the roof line, the way that it's jagged out. 45 degree angle, north to south direction. What's it full of? What type of rock? What? And what's in the quartz? Good job. So, we know it was full of, we know that there was something in here because of that angle and that degree. The way it's been left. Timbers behind me, what do you think they're doing? Now, before you just go and shout out, have a good think about it. What do you think these timbers would be doing? Is that putting the ceiling maybe? That is like a toothpick holding your car up. Would that work? <laughs> Giving him a hand, no. hand grip? No. no. Why did you say that, sir? So this gentleman just said alarm. Oh, yeah. Why would you say alarm. that? Oh, what? Yeah, alarm. we've got floorboards at home. Floorboards. Anyone? Floorboards? Yes. Oh. Yeah, what, do you, what happens when you're trying to have that midnight snack and you're not trying to wake anyone up in the house? They creak. They yeah. creak, don't they? And you think, oh, they're all going to wake up. Well, that's what these timbers do. When, they, when there's movement or pressure applied to these timbers, they creak and they groan and they tell these miners that something's happening and they need to get out. The saying is when the timbers start talking, you start walking. Well, it's meant to be walking, but do you think you'd be walking if that's going to creak? No. No. But where are you going to run to, folks? You've got two rock walls here, so dead ends along the side. Uh, it goes 15 metres in that direction to a dead end, and it goes 15 metres in that direction to a dead end, and there is no opening on the roof. How did I get in here? Yeah. I'm putting it back on you now. Same way you came in. How's that, sir? Back to the uh, shaft there? Or the... Nope. nope. This is literally, so you need, to, like I said, you need to imagine rock walls. So this is like an enclosed area. There is an entrance and um, you can all see it. Can you see an entrance? I can't see it by looking at you though. Where, sir? <laughs> Alright, so you're telling me oh, if these timbers start creaking right this second, are you all going to go down that hole? No. Yeah? Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. you're right. He is 100% correct. There's a hole. I'm going to go down oh, there, you? Oh, the ladder is. No. Oh. <laughs> no, thank you. Why are you going to go? Isn't the surface above us? No. I did say they did come from Cornwall, didn't I? Yeah. Does everyone know where Cornwall is? 
the UK. Everyone knows where London is? Yeah, on the other side of Australia. Australia, <laughs> London. Yeah. yeah. They've dug 4,000 million years. Oh, oh, <laughs> no, that is the entrance to this mine, ladies and gentlemen. Has anyone been to the candle store today? Yes. Yes? Only one family. We're going. You're going. Okay, well, I recommend you to go. Up near the candle store, it looks like a wishing well. Has anyone seen that? Oh, yes. Yes? yes. yes? Did you look down it? Yeah. What did you see? Nothing. Oh. <laughs> That's not the answer I'm looking for. Just a rock. Paid a weekly wage to feed those families up on the surface. Anyone want to be a company miner? Put your hand up. No. no. Okay, all right. What about an independent miner? Any gold you find is yours, because in the company mine you can't keep the gold. You have to hand it over. Yeah, hey, you don't have to pay yeah, so, too. Yeah, that's correct. So, anyone want to be an independent miner? Yeah. yeah. So, sir, uh, did you put your hand up as well, yes, sir? Yeah. All right, gentlemen, I'm going to put this back on you a moment. What happens if you don't find gold after two or three days? Are you going to continue? Sure. What happens to your family? Oh, they go hungry. <laughs> I feel for you. Whoever's come with this gentleman today, I feel for you. I feel for you. Don't trust him. So what would you do after two to three days? Would you give up or would you push on and soldier on? Oh, I've gone with this much trouble. I keep going. Yeah. Keep going. After two to three days? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? What after about after a week? Yeah, keep going. Really? At this point, your family is starving. You've got no food. He's my business partner. <laughs> Would you go somewhere else? Start uh, again? Ask for a job at the company. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Folks, otherwise you can own your own blacksmith or the lodge. You guys put way too much emphasis on the family, don't you think?